is that dead animals already dead these animals are consumed then that is called as scavengers now here these scavengers can consume dead food as well as they can carry out hunting also whereas carnivorous uh, predator category is predominantly depending upon the prey that is hunt and then consuming the food but it will not think of herbivorous food certain animals like jackal they are categorized as omnivores they are the category where veg as well as non veg whether it is scavenger like action or predator like action anything is possible we are calling as omnivorous action now in case of human being as we are considering first thing is ejection for ejection we have to select food then the digestion process begins from that on selection of food that food enters in first mouth we are calling that as buccal chamber now here and uh, showing this diagram just for brief ex uh, explanation this diagram is there the food is entering in mouth then it is completely physically crushed down then it enters in esophagus then this is stomach then duodenum certain associated glands are there then intestine that is small intestine then this is the large intestine and it is thrown away out of body this is the proper way now in the, between that the absorb uh, the digested food you are aware of digestion the complex substances are made into simple substance that is absorb over here and what is not absorbed that is thrown away out of the, the body so that is called as ejection now whatever the food is absorbed that is made part of our body exactly uh, you are aware of cell and you are aware of protoplasm say so this is our any cell animal cell is easy to draw no fixed shape is there this is nucleus then you can call this as endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria and so on organelles are there whatever is there inside cell membrane that is called as protoplasm i am revising whatever there inside cell membrane is called as protoplasm so it is say that assimilation means on absorption of food material simpler food material it is absorbed by cell and it is made part of protoplasm then we are calling that as assimilation so ejection that is food is taken in then by using various enzymes it is break down converted into simpler substance we are calling as digestion then food is absorbed this process is absorption then on absorption it is assimilated that is going inside the cell becoming part of protoplasm we are calling as assimilation if assimilation is not done then food material is poisonous keep in mind digested food is also if it is not absorbed immediately it can be poisonous for human health so assimilation is important and then the unwanted material or undigested food that is thrown away outside the body this process is called as ejection so this is all process total we are calling as nutrition now certain components they are part of our nutrition but they are not digested for example uh, in nutrition topic you are again and again hearing the word that is fibers don't consider fiber means fiber what we are calling this is actually cellulose material human body is not able to digest out cellulose and so we are calling it as fiber or cellulose part that is not digested by body but it is very very essential because ejection process is facilitated by presence of cellulose so we are calling this part as also important part of food so nutrition process is now clear we can uh, just summarize the whatever we have discussed revising first thing uh, two mode of nutrition we have discussed that is autotrophic and heterotrophic in case of autotrophic 
we have discussed about photosynthetic but keep in mind apart from that certain other mods are also there like chemosynthetic so here we are discuss only photosynthetic uh, mode of nutrition then uh, in case of heterotroph we have discuss about saprophytic and holozoic the third category we discuss about parasitic then in case of nutrition we discuss steps that first step is uh, in case of holozoic human being we are considering first step is uh, food consumption that is called as ejection uh, ingestion the first step that is ingestion second that is digestion third absorption fourth assimilation and fifth ejection so all these steps are important now we are concentrating on the digestion process whatever the diagram is here you can just check out i am making little bit darker the diagram so you can check out here this diagram uh, from childhood you are familiar with this diagram so this is the digestive system many organ working together we are calling as organ system now this digestion process is carried out by group of organ initially i can say the food is taken in now we are focusing on digestive system this is mouth now the process of digestion begins with usually we are saying mouth but it begins with eyes so when you are observing out something say for example a nicely decorated dish that will attract us encourage us for food consumption same way our nose that is also playing very very important role there are few people as you should say rather unlucky people they are not able to smell out but those who are having sense of smell perfect for them the food or the smell of food is also encouraging and food is consumed now here first eyesight the smell then obviously sense of brain say for example i am pure vegetarian whereas smell of non veg that cannot attract me for my food consumption suppose somebody is not having liking for particular smell then that smell of food actually that is smell of food but that will not encourage him or her for food brain is also practically involved in the process like this that liking or disliking for particular substance now after that food enters in mouth here taste plays vital role and then the mechanical crushing of food that starts over here now this mechanical crushing is very very important now here we are having a part of mouth or buccal cavity this cavity we are calling as buccal cavity so part of that is very important that we are uh, discussing now the teeth the pattern here rather i should say now it's very clear uh, first four teeth from lower jaw try to recollect we are calling this as mandible and this upper part as maxilla so here four and here four so total eight in scissors uh, try to recollect scissor word so this teeth they are useful for biting or say rather cutting out so like that action is carried out so we are calling this as incisors after that two here and two here they are called as canines canines are pointed actually in order to break out harder substances now in case of human being here two canines are there and here two canines are there say so whenever i am closing out my bite 
they should remain like this okay so this is the action where now in case of certain animals like tiger cat you will find that canines are say this is first and this is second canine they are so large or the length is so high here they are having this type of action that means just i am showing this way you will find a difference this way they are closing up this is not the case this is the closing side that's why in case of ape what is ape it is sort of monkey usually we are calling when tail is absent then that is called as ape the gorilla orangutan chimpanzee all of these are name of apes so they are having this type of uh, canines that lower canine that is going to upper side where here gap is there and same way upper canine is coming at lower side there is also gap but in case of human being what is the important characters that canines are having almost same size as that of incisors and premolars you can check out your slightly you are getting greater that's all now total four incisors uh, total four canines to here to here then here two here two that means four and here also four we are calling as premolars the next sequence that is molars so total i just count out 4 plus 4 8 incisors 4 canines so 8 plus 4 12 then 4 lower jaw and 4 upper jaw that means 8 premolars so 12 plus 8 20 then here 2 2 same way upper jaw 2 and 2 so total 8 28 molars so total 28 is the number of teeth present here but uh, at higher age growing age we are having another type of molar we are calling as wisdom tooth at end of jaw they are coming out here they are called as wisdom tooth now total four wisdom tooth are there so that's why in case of adult male or female maximum number of teeth that is 28 plus 4 that is 32 whereas in case of uh, rather i should not say adult but usually till age of 25 there are 28 teeth present in human mouth usually around 25 say certain exceptions are there but usually around 25 there are 28 teeth whereas in case of 25 plus according to different people and personality the number of teeth can vary from 28 to 32 maximum number now in case of human being we are having certain problems with this teeth for example they are not used properly in early childhood proper brushing may be possible it is not there so there is one more chance around age of 8 original teeth start de decaying and destroying whereas there is arrival of new set of teeth this term in biology or rather in this greek language we are calling diphyodont so diphyodont that means we are having chance of getting teeth twice and that's why we are classified under diphyodont second thing we are having similar set of teeth just observe purposefully i was showing like that four incisor four incisor eight two canines two canines so upper jaw and lower jaw both are having same set and same number of teeth now this way uh, we are talking of first buccal chamber this all arrangement of teeth that is we are calling as 
परफेक्ट अरेंजमेंट फॉर क्रशिंग ग्राइंडिंग एंड मेकिंग वेरी वेरी फाइन पेस्ट ऑफ द सब्सटेंस वॉट एवर यू आर कंज्यूमिंग ऑफ नो डाउट इन केस दिस मस्क्युलर पोर्शन दैट वी आर कॉलिंग एज टंग इज प्लेइंग इम्पॉर्टंट रोल से वाइल आई एम स्पीकिंग डिफरेंट एक्शंस आर देव दिस एक्शंस आर कंट्रोल बाय टंग टंग इज फंटेस्टिक ऑर्गेन डेवलप्ड ओवर हियर सो इट इज यूज फॉर स्पीकिंग आउट द स्पीकिंग एबिलिटी सेकेंड वेन वी आर कंज्यूमिंग आउट फूड द फूड इज पास आउट इन टू डिफरंट लोकेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू द टाइप ऑफ फूड बाय बाय टंग बट फॉर दैट पर्पज टू मेक ग्राइंडिंग इजियर अ सेट ऑफ ग्लैंड that is important we are calling these glands as salivary glands so here there is set of salivary glands that is from this side here so salivary glands are there now we are discussing at a time say i don't want to separate out first digestive system and then no we want to discuss each and every point at a time only and so we are just discussing out here what is the nature of salivary gland first and what are the enzymes secreted by this gland salivary glands are classified into this way first it's sublingual gland uh, you are aware of the word linguistic language it is related